And I didn't see uh, Becca in her room tonight, so. Maybe she's in the hospital. Yeah, maybe she is. Maybe Tom's watching a baseball game. Is there a baseball game tonight, Jerry? Oh, yeah. Oh, the, oh, oh, yeah, that's where Tom's at. Oh, no, no, that's where he's <laughs> yeah. at. Well, well, you know, the, the Mariners are in a race for the basement. Yeah. Well, they did was there. He ate the same table we did. Uh huh. Good. Well, praise the Lord. You know, it's good to be back again, and uh, we're going to continue on in Matthew 23. We're on um, verse 15. And uh, we're talking about the woes. And <clears throat> these woes are kind of important to understand, and that's why I'm taking my time to go through them one each, each week, at a verse each week. Because uh, when you get over into the book of Revelations and you talk about the woes there again, once again, you're going to find out just how important these woes really are. This when it says woe says the Lord woe unto you says the Lord that that's pretty serious business you can't get any more serious than that and that's what we we as Christians need to believe because otherwise we get complacent and we get to thinking well our flesh gets to thinking well we can we, we can hedge here but you know, with Jesus, there's no hedging. You, you, you can't hedge with God. And, and that's what he's, he's illustrating here. So I'm going to have Jerry come up, and he's going to read for me. Jerry Goodman? Yeah, okay. Well, I'm going to tell you guys. He's a good man. My wife and I are going to go down to the beach uh, Sunday. We'll come back Wednesday. So Carol Jolly is going to read yeah, Matthew yeah. 23, 16, plus some commentary. Yeah. So I hope you, uh, I've, got, I've got, got all the rest of them done except for one. Okay, so here we go, Matthew 23, 15. Now this is taken from the Expository Study Bible, Ladies Edition. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah well, you like this. <laughs> Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, you hypocrites, for you compass, compass can be used as a kind of covering a lot of the ground. You, for you compass sea and land to make one proselyte, which is working zealously to draw people to themselves instead of the Lord. Oh. And when he is made, you make him twofold, more than the child of hell than your, yourselves, which is religious people are the hardest of all to bring to the Lord. Bible Commentary by Warren Worsby. Really it is. The Word of God has authority <laughs> even if the people who teach it lack integrity. Our Lord's standard is that we both do and teach His truth. Those who practice hypocrisy erode their character and do untold damage to others. The tragedy is that hypocrisy blinds people so that they cannot see the Lord themselves or other people. The Pharisees were blind to themselves. They were right and everybody else was wrong. Because they majored in the externals, they never saw the rottenness in their hearts. Because they majored on the minor details, they ignored the great principles of the word. Hypocrites never see the damage done to others. Closing doors of blessing, defiling those who touched them, giving people a wrong sense of values. No wonder Jesus wept. These, quote, woes were born of anguish, not anger. Between anguish, anguish and anger. Now, a lot of people will die, they'll be, they'll be angry, and then they'll have feelings of anguish. And perhaps he is weeping over you and me. Amen. 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 There's something that it's very missing in the body of Christ right now, and that is anguish. And a uh, great prophet of my time and reverend of my time, David Wilkerson, did a wonderful message on anguish. Where's the anguish in the church? Amongst God's people. And I think we need to 
hear God's cry. And we need to be able to discern the spirits that surround us. To know what is the Spirit of God and which isn't the Spirit of God. There's many of, of people who come in the name of the Lord and are ministering in the name of the Lord. But they're nothing more than the wolves in sheep's clothing. Because they do not uphold the principles and values of God's laws. They yield over to that which is of the world. And whatever is of the world is of Satan. Because God is not of this world. And we have a personal relationship as Christ. We made a covenant oath with Christ when we ask Him to come into our hearts to deliver us from our sins and from our woes and from our wearies and to bring us into serenity and peace into His arms and into His house that we are under His roof that we would have blessing be sold upon us. There are many amongst us that are in the woes clothing and they cover themselves under the flock of a sheep and they're spreading viperous lies and they're distorting the word and the truth and that's what God is saying woe unto those that do this and they get these people who are seeking God's truth into believing lies and they're voting when it comes time to vote, to pass laws, to represent their nation and their livelihood. In other words, they're voting in abominations, sins that they could live by and thinking that the church will sanctify those sins because I'm a churchgoer. I believe that it's okay. It's okay. We'll invite them in. We'll invite them in to our house of worship and praise. And maybe someday they'll see the light. <clears throat> we have to uphold a standard, a greater standard than that that is within us. We have to uphold the standard of the truth. <clears throat> and we have to preach the truth and teach the truth. That's where discipleship comes in. And you've heard me speak about discipleship. How many of us do not know how to disciple. Because we will allow them to sweep the sin under the carpet. And then someday they're going to fall on it. Flat on their face. And they're going to wonder why. It's because they allowed a little bit of sin to come in, it's like a little bit of leaven into a loaf of bread. And it polluted the whole loaf. So it's no longer unleavened bread. Have you ever wondered why in the Old Testament, during Passover and before Passover, the Jews had to all clean out all leaven from their house. They had to rip off the wallpaper and scrub down the wall paste, get it out of their house, anything that had leaven in it, because it's of sin. That's what we need to do with our lives. We need to circumcise our hearts to the Lord. Very few people are willing to circumcise their heart and to be truly separated from the world around them. So that they can be that lighthouse on the road that Jerry's, uh, on the hill that Jerry was singing about. We are to be the guiding light. We are to be the one that comes in and say, there is a way out of no way that God has created for each and every one of us. When He came here in the flesh, God Almighty came here in the flesh and He was crucified on the cross so that you can have eternal life with Him. Yeah. Yeah. 
not with some denomination, not with some religion. Religiosity, God has nothing to do with religiosity and religion. He has absolutely nothing to do with that. He has to deal with the personal relationship with each and every one of us so that we can become more Christ-like. There isn't one amongst us that is greater than God that we can change the weather. Not one of us can save this earth from anything. There's a lot of Looney Tunes out there that think that they can save the earth from the snow caps melting, or from this happening, or that happening. Tree huggers, greeners. They think they're more powerful than God. Well, they're not. They're serving a religion. They're serving Satan and his doings. You cannot change the atmosphere. Only God can. But is there a church today that will open their mouths up and say, No, I cannot marry two of the same sex together. That is blasphemy. That is from a reprobate mind of Satan. That is not God's law or God's way. When it comes to our children in schools, are the Christians standing up in the public schools and fighting back and saying we cannot do away with history because it teaches the facts of that America came from a biblical background and a judarial principles. We come from the truth of God. But no, they don't. We have too many people coming in the name of the Lord that's standing in sheep's clothing. And they're raving, ravaging wolves ready to turn down and tear down your very foundations that you have been given by God Almighty. They do, not, they do not care if you have your inalienable rights or not. They want to take them away from you. They want to take the Word of God out of the churches and out of your homes. They don't want you to, they want you to be totally defenseless. De de defenseless. <coughs> they don't want you to be able to defend yourself and your family. That's against God's principles. But no, does the church stand up for that? No. So woe unto those that do these things and come in the name of the Lord. For they need our prayer. You can love them, but leave them until they come to know God's word. The sad thing is the majority of of those people that are in teaching authority, that are in the ministry, know better because they have read the same book that you read, the Bible. They have had the same opportunity to have the Holy Spirit to come in and speak to their hearts. And if a blind person who is totally blind that has no eyes whatsoever, such as myself, can see the light from the lighthouse, and they can feel the presence of the Holy Spirit and know and discern the truth. What in the world is the matter with them? I know what it is. They have hardened their hearts to the truth. They do not take the time to apply themselves to study and to read God's Word and see if what's happening in the news or what's happening around them and take that and put it up against God's Word and see where God stands in that. They are sluggards. And that's what God says. He calls them sluggards. Because they have hardened their hearts and they have no backbone to stand 
for his word and his principles and his values. We are living in times that are tribulation times. We are at the beginning of tribulation. And we are going to see what has happened in the Middle East will start happening here in our own residence, in our own neighborhoods. Because God's people have not stood together to unite on one thing, and that's truth. They rather fight amongst themselves and stand for religiosity and religion and denominations and become a big corporate business than serving the one true God. That is the facts. And that's what we have to understand. And that's why God says to them, Woe unto you! It's better that you burn in hell. Because there's no place for them in heaven. You're not going to hear that in your neighborhood churches. Unless you have a spirit-filled leader that's willing to tell you the truth. Because people don't want to hear the truth. They have hardened their hearts to it. But there is one way, and only one way, to make it through that. And that is through the cross of Jesus Christ. And repenting of our sins and being proactive in our relationship with Jesus Christ so that we know that we are doing His Word and not the Word of Satan. That we come to Him and bow our knees and ask Him to forgive us and to cleanse us of our sins and pack the cross wherever we go. In other words, pack the two-edged sword, God's Word, wherever we are, so that we will be the man and woman, our child of God, that He's called us to be. Peace be with you. May God's blessings be upon you. May the Spirit of the Lord shine upon you. May He give you rest and comfort and bring peace into your life and strengthen you by the Holy Spirit daily. Thank you. Amen. 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 Amen.